Shakita, look at this. It's my bracelet. It's all rusty. What happened? Oh, yeah, that happens. The metal your bracelet is made out of oxidized. Wait, like an oxidation reaction? I think I heard that somewhere. Yeah, you should have. Miss Mo did a lesson on it a while back. But that's so weird. A reaction happened with my bracelet. I thought oxidation was with, like, only alcohol and stuff. Well, yeah, but that same process can be applied to a lot of other molecules. Oxidation occurs in combustion, photosynthesis, cellular respiration, and even corrosion, like with your bracelet. I'm lost. Okay, maybe uh, it'll make more sense if I re-explain the oxidation process with an alcohol. So let's take pentan one ol for instance. This is a primary alcohol, meaning the carbon that's attached to the hydroxyl group is only attached to one other carbon. In order to oxidize this alcohol, we need to add in an oxidizing agent. The job of this oxidizing agent is to remove electrons or hydrogen groups. The alcohol loses hydrogen groups and is said to be oxidized. One way to tell if a substance has been oxidized is to check if the number of bonds from carbon to oxygen increase or if the bonds from carbon to hydrogen decrease. Oxygen doesn't necessarily need to be involved. So let's see how a reaction between pentan 1 ol and a strong oxidizing agent like potassium dichromate will play out. On the pentan 1 ol we will be focusing on the carbon that is already bonded to the hydroxyl group. This carbon-oxygen bond makes this carbon more vulnerable to being oxidized, so we leave the other carbons alone. When oxidizing this carbon, we will be creating a double bond to the oxygen. To do this, two of the hydrogens must be removed. One must be removed off the carbon and the other off the oxygen. As this oxidation occurs, we are left with the products pentanol and aldehyde and hydrogen gas. But remember, we are not done yet. This aldehyde produced is not the final product. Because potassium dichromate is a strong oxidizing agent, this reaction will immediately go to completion. The aldehyde produced in the middle cannot even be isolated from this reaction. It is immediately further oxidized. We will explore the second oxidation step in our next segment. To further oxidize the aldehyde pentanol, the carbon-hydrogen bond is broken and an oxygen is added. The hydrogen removed from the carbon is added back to the oxygen. And so our final product is pentanoic acid and we have no other products produced. Therefore, through the magic of oxidation, we were able to turn our alcohol into a carboxylic acid. Wow, I get it now. So even my bracelet? The metal simply lost electrons or hydrogen groups to oxygen in the air, and that caused a color change. Chemistry is so cool. So wait, because pentan one ol was a primary alcohol, the carbon was able to oxidize in two steps. Let's say it was a secondary alcohol, then it would be, then it would only be able to oxidize once, right? Because there's one less hydrogen bond and one less thing being oxidized. Exactly. A secondary alcohol can only oxidize once to form a ketone. Yeah, I see. The carbon attached to the hydroxyl group is attached to the two carbons, which is why it's called a secondary alcohol, and only one other hydrogen. So it can be oxidized to form a double bond with oxygen, and two hydrogens will be removed, one off the carbon and the other off the oxygen, exactly like the first step of oxidizing primary alcohols, except there's no room to continue. Exactly. So what about tertiary alcohols? Ooh, well, those have one less hydrogen bond. That than secondary alcohols. If secondary al alcohols can only oxidize once, tertiary alcohols must not oxidize at all. Exactly, Avina, you're getting it. Tertiary alcohols have a carbon bonded to a hydroxyl group just like the other ones. But the three other bonds are all with carbons. Carbon-carbon bonds are inherently hard to break and so the reaction will simply not go through. I knew it. It's all coming back to me. Potassium dichromate is a strong oxidizing agent, but it's also useful in oxidizing reactions because it gives a color change from orange to green. When there's a color change, it's indicative of the reaction occurring. As oxidation occurs, there's a loss in the number of electrons that causes the energy to change. This will res result in a change in the wavelengths. This change is ultimately the color change we notice in the reaction. Oh, yeah, wow. I almost forgot about that. Good job, Abina. Miss Mo would definitely be proud of you. But anyways, I spent more time on this than I would have liked to, so I'm going to get back to my homework now. Bye-bye. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much. Bye. And wait, who's that person watching us through the screen?
Honestly, no idea. But hey, I think they learned a lot. Or is it just Miss Mo judging us? Oh, yeah, that sounds about right.